Good morning, everyone. Thank you for spending a couple of minutes with us to go over the introduction of TPP Online. My name is Kevin Jones. I'm the manager of IT and Gen Services for the Washington State Golf Association. And we will spend up to two hours, hopefully not that long, of going through all the major sections of TPP Online. And we'll actually build out an event um, so you can kind of see the whole program in action. Before we begin, um, I'd like to go over a couple of housekeeping items. Um, first, um, in order to keep this flowing, um, we have muted everybody on the screen. And so you will see a chat window on your right-hand side, most likely. Uh, please utilize that chat window if you have any questions. We will try to answer those as we go along. Um, after every major section of this uh, TPP program, we will stop briefly to look to see if there's any questions about that section and answer them accordingly. If we don't get around to your question, um, we will try to answer at the end, or please uh, feel free to email me or call me directly, and we will try to help you through that. Also, um, I like to go over a few things about the pros and cons of this system versus the old system. Um, many of you have probably used the old TPP client program, have become very comfortable with it. It was a great program. Um, the thing is, is that now it's about 12 to 13 years old, so it is very old. And um, times have changed um, with uh, how things are processed. And now you can see here on your screen, TPP Online is now completely web-based. It's not actually a piece of software that resides on your computer anymore from installing from a disk. Um, so with that comes a little bit of functionality changes, some visual changes. Um, TPP Online, <clears throat> in my opinion, offers the greatest benefit is that it's on the web and it creates mobility. Um, no longer do you have to carry that program around with you. You could be on any computer in the world as long as you have internet and you can access your TPP Online account. Um, that's what's great about this. You could build your tournament at home and then access a computer at your club and all of your results and all of your work will still be right there. Um, TPP Online does come with one downfall right now against the old client program, and that is right now there is no scorecard or report designer in the program. And that's because being able to create that kind of functionality in the web is actually very difficult, and I do know that Jen is looking for a vendor to be able to provide that technology. Um, but it is, um, like I said, it's very difficult, and so um, when the new technology of GIN comes out, we don't know exactly when that's going to roll out. We're hoping in 18 to 24 months. Um, definitely, we would look for that kind of to be part of the new TPP environment. But beyond that, TPP Online can do everything and a little bit more, um, which we will go through briefly here in a second. Um, for those who have never used TPP Online, um, please email us or use the chat window, and we'll be more than gladly to help you get a free account set up. Um, what we'll do is we'll reach out to you, um, we'll get you set up with the club you're associated with, and then a username and password so you can start playing around with the program and getting, uh, getting used to it. Okay, with that, um, I think we are ready to begin. Like I said, please utilize the chat window. We will stop after every major section. So let's begin. So as I mentioned before, TPP Online is completely web-based. And ideally, the program has been devised around um, Firefox, which is a web browser. Many of you may use Internet Explorer, Safari, Chrome. All of those are fine, but just keep in mind that um, we've seen some issues with Internet Explorer. Um, Chrome works pretty well, and I haven't worked a whole lot with Safari, but I, I'm imagining it works fine as well. But if you can, uh, Firefox is a free download. If you just go to Google and type in Mozilla Firefox, you will be able to download it for free. And I have Firefox up here, and I've got the launch page of TPP Online loaded. So to begin, if you'd like, um, 
The web address is very simple. As you can see here in my address bar, it's tpp.gen.com. And if you hit enter, it will bring up this launch page here. So this looks a little bit different from the client program. I'm gonna quickly go through what these buttons are. Um, and knowing that some of this is the advanced features that we won't quite dive into today, but there is something that we will probably develop some uh, videos for you in the future to take a look at and some really cool features that you may want to add to your events. Uh, the first one is the administration button. This is where we're going to be working in today. This is how you run your entire event. Uh, scoring results. Scoring results is the new feature that allows you to post the results of your tournament, your championship, your event on the web. And what it does, it creates a link where it will show a live leaderboard as you type in your scores, where people can see the stats of the golf course, the stats of the player, how they're doing, their scorecard, everything. It's a really cool feature that you can utilize in your own events. Uh, next is on-course scoring. This is taking this even to another level. Um, like we do at our own WSJ Championships, where you could have somebody with a phone, a tablet on the golf course, actually recording scores, and they will be live to the tournament. So um, maybe you have somebody stationed at hole 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and then those scores can be recorded on the golf course and be live to people as they're playing. Uh, the next one is golfer registration. This is actually a way to uh, create an e-commerce space for uh, registering golfers. Um, as of this moment, we really don't have anybody utilizing this tool because the only e-commerce gateway available through this right now is NMI. Some of you may be using, uh, utilizing that for e-clubhouse, um, but we don't have a lot of people set up with that count, so um, it's a good feature but we understand there's a lot of charges involved with that and you may be um, operating under a different uh, way of getting people signed up and we understand that. The last thing here is TPP Viewer. Um, this is a really cool feature where you will put up a live leaderboard that scrolls as if you were watching the PGA Tour on television and then you can display your own live leaderboard on your own television. Um, so a lot of clubs have began to take advantage of this if you've got a smart TV or just a big screen television in your club, um, you can actually tie your live leaderboard as you're typing results in into that television and it will scroll and update automatically to kind of give your event that kind of nice feel, of, you know, pizzazz, something different to your event that's um, as people are coming in the golf course and eating uh, lunch or something and they're watching the results come in, it just um, it adds a nice feature to your event. So today, let's get into administration. So for this example, what we're going to do today is we're going to build a four ball tournament, um, most normally called a best ball. And we're just going to do a simple best ball to kind of work through the program and show you some functionality on how this program works. Uh, the first thing you can do is log in. As I said, if you do not currently have a login information, please reach out to us and we will absolutely set up an account for you so you can start um, playing around with the tournament program. Um, for those who do have a computer, if you have another screen on your computer, if you want to follow along as I am, uh, feel free to do so. All right, so now I am logged into my event. So right now we can see we are under my our WSJ PNGA Golf Club. Uh, we have a couple of test events set up from a previous TPP online seminar we did. So what we need to do is that we need to start creating our event. So we're gonna work off of like the old client program, if you remember. As you can see, things are here on the left-hand side. Previously with the client program, it was all across the top bar, and you worked from left to right. Well, with TPP Online, they moved it over to the left-hand side to kind of get it out of the way, and in this example, you work from top down. So the first thing we want to do is I want to look at administration, and the only thing I want to pay attention for you guys to know is that if you're the administrator of your TPP Online club, 
um, I want to show that there is a users tab here. And this is where you can grant people additional user rights or create them a user as at all so that they have access into your account so they can create tournaments, you know, write tournaments, they can edit tournaments and all that stuff. So as you can see here, John and I are the administrator users of this particular account. You have the option to push this button to add additional users. I will show you here that you do not have to grant everybody as an administrator who has complete access rights. Uh, create means that they can create tournaments and do everything. The only thing they cannot do is um, add users or remove, edit, uh, remove or edit users. Also, you can do read only, meaning they can only look at stuff, or read write, meaning they can't create an event, but if you already have one created, they can go in there and edit the data as necessary. Uh, you would then create a username, a password. There is no limits to what you put in there or restrictions. Um, you would have to at least put a first and last name and an email and hit save, and that user would be added to your group, and then they can log in going forward. That's the only thing I wanted to point out right now under administration. A lot of this has to do with the um, e-commerce side, which we're not going to touch on. So let's start making our event, which we talked about is going to just be a simple best ball tournament. Before we can create our event, especially if you are somebody who just started using TPP online, is that if you start creating an event and you have no golf courses, it's going to stop you immediately. So instead of starting at tournament, I'm actually going to go to golf course. And this is where you should go to as well to start when you get beginning. So what you have two options here. You have import from CRP, which is the course rating program, and then you have course management. So I want to pull in a brand new golf course into my TPP online so I can start building that event. So I'm going to import CRP. And so um, as you know, the WSA is associated with the home course. So I'm going to pull in the home course for this example. So I'm going to go to our state, Washington, and then T, and then it's going to list all the golf courses that start with T, and here's the home course, and now it's going to pull in all the T's that are associated that have a course rating for the home course. Now, I don't have to pull in every T here. I can only, I can pull in just select T's, so if I just want the blue and the white, that's okay, I can just pull those in. Or I can end up just clicking here at top and that will bring in all of the T's and that's what I'm gonna do today. So at the bottom here, you can see there's an import all and there's an import selected button. In this case, I am going to import them all. And give it one second. Um, also, recognizing the fact that this is web-based, keep in mind that the speed in terms of how things run on this program really is about what kind of internet speed you're working as well. If you have a really slow internet speed, there will be some delay when you're clicking the button. So just keep that in mind so you're not too frustrated as you're moving along through the program. Okay, so this is a key thing to look at here below. Uh, it's, it's told me that the selected T's have been updated. You want to be seeing this red. That means that the functionality has completed. If you don't see it, there is something wrong or something has aired out. So make sure to be looking for this. So now that has been brought in. So what I'm going to do is now come back to course. And I'm now going to go to course management. And now you can see that here is the home course. And those 12 T's have been brought in. So now I want to look at my T's. So here are the 12 T's that we just brought in. And for the sake of this event that we're going to run today, I'm going to run it just, we're going to run a men's event, and it's going to run off the white T's. So I want to take a look at my scorecard. And this is important when you set up your event. So here's my scorecard. The yardages are brought in from what the uh, CRP had when um, our course rating team went out and did the official measurement. These are the, it will also generate par. Now keep in mind here, this is a commonly asked question. 
par in this system is not generated on par as what other than your scorecard. It's generating par based on USGA recommended guidelines. And what those are as follows. Up to 250 yards is considered a par three, and up to 470 yards is considered a par four. A lot of you probably have that 465 yard par five. Just keep in mind that when you load it in the system the first time, it will be loaded in as a par four, and that you will need to come in here and manually adjust that for your event. And absolutely right here is a perfect example. Um, so, um, Oh, this is interesting, <laughs> that uh, it actually adjusted to a par five, and I believe that's because it's already been in part of the system. If you have a brand new fresh account, um, normally this would be logged in as a par four, and, it, and all you gotta do is just adjust it, and as you can see, the, the par is automatically adjusted, including the totals, and then you would just hit save. Um, we do know that this is a par five, so I'm going to adjust that back and hit save. Um, but just keep in mind that, um, as you can see here, 470 yards on number 16 is listed a par 4. Um, we do know that uh, that is a par 5, so actually I'm going to adjust that one as well and bringing us to par 72. So I'm going to hit save. Um, with this program, keep in mind that always, if there is a save button and you have done something on the screen, always hit save because too many times people have called me saying, hey, I did something, I did something, and then it never showed up again. And then I asked, did you hit the save button? They're like, oops. So just keep that in mind, always hit the save button. All right, so now our white tee is set up. Uh, one thing I did forget and that I need to correct quickly is that we do want to run a net competition with this four ball that we're gonna do. So you do need to manually enter in the handicap strokes so I'm going to quickly do that for this event. And keep in mind that this will carry forward to future events, so it is a one-time thing that you will need to do. And we're almost there. And I need one more, and that would be 13. All right, I'm going to save that. All right, so now our scorecard and tee is set up for our event for the white tees. Um, that pretty much, uh, it finishes up course. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding course before I start moving into our tournament? This is a pretty short section, and it's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but... I will wait here one second to see if there is any questions. All right, we will move along here. So now we need to actually create our event. Okay, we do have one question that says, what does copy T information do? So copy T, um, let me go back into here. So what copy T information does is that if you have, um, let's say I hadn't filled all this information in. Um, so let's say I had already adjusted the blue tees to the par and the handicap strokes and pace of play. I've entered all this information in. By kick, uh, click, uh, clicking on copy T information, I can actually replicate this additional optional information from the blue tee to the white tee so you don't have to re-enter it in. A lot of golf courses, um, especially for handicap strokes, for the men's side is the same across all tees. They're usually not separate. So this is a great way to just bring that information across all those tees without having to manually enter it in again. Uh, we have another question. If you're doing a couples tournament, I assume you just do it for both tees, and that is absolutely correct. So you'll do it on the men's side, and then you would also do it for the white on the women's side, just to make sure that those women are getting the correct strokes for them 
across for their certain handicap um, allocation, and the men will get their strokes based on their handicap allocation based on the golf course. All right, so we're going to move in and we're going to create our event. So let's click on tournament, and then we're going to select create. So this is where all is going to kind of look very similar to the old client program. So in this fam, we're just going to do, uh, we're going to call it the home course uh, men's four ball. Um, the rest of this information is optional, just the name is required. Also make sure that the gender is select, especially if you're doing a mix event or a female or male. So we do know this is a male event, so we'll leave that alone. We will then come down to the round setup. Um, so then here are your choices, you know, stroke play, match play, round robin league, cup matches. Um, one option that was available in the uh, the client program that is not available, that is available in the online program, but it's kind of hidden, is Stableford. And I will go into where you can find that information, but Stableford was called out as a tournament type, and now it is part of stroke play. And so I will go briefly on how to get that going. If anybody has any questions about Stableford, give us a call and we'll give you a further explanation. So this is stroke play event, um, one round for today, but you can enter as many rounds as you want. And then we'll come down to our round detail. Um, let's say that this is for this weekend on the Saturday, so April 2nd. So I changed my date. It is an 18-hole match. It could be nine. And then I need to set up the default tee for this event. So I'm going to come in here. It's going to it will list all the golf courses you have under course management. And like we said, we'd set this up for the home course white tee. So we'll select that. And now we have the home course white, as you can see over here. And we're ready to save this event. All right. So there's our red time uh, tag, that's perfect, it's been created. What's also nice about TPP Online is that it will actually give you prompts on where you may want to go next. Um, it's saying, hey, do you want to continue on to net information? Um, as we've been pushing around here a lot, uh, many of you know about Section 3-5 of the USG Handicap System, where you have people competing from different tee boxes or men versus women, and you want those uh, handicap strokes allocated correctly based on the handicap system, well, this is where you would do that. So, and then it gives you additional places on where you may want to go next. I'm going to follow along across here to not get you confused here. Just let you know that there always will be prompts when you're moving through the sections. All right, so now that we've created our event, also keep in mind that once you create an event, you can always click on select to go into another event, or if you are going into your program for the first time, you will be able to select an event that you've already created. Um, you do have the option to remove tournaments if you put one together. Um, edit. So we've ordered just in basic setup. You can always go to edit and back into basic setup. I will go into net information here briefly. So you can set up handicap limits just like the old client program. You can do it by course handicap or index. Here is section 3-5. Just like the client program, you would set it off low rating, high rating, or off rating of T. Um, many of you know how this works. If you need a further explanation, please uh, reach out to us. And then you would just hit save. All right, moving along here. Um, I will jump in. I'm going to uh, pass over this stuff. As you said, this is an introductory course. Um, but I want to uh, talk about these two briefly. So points is where Stableford is set up. So let's go into points here. And here are your Stableford points. It will give you a basic start, but you can change this however you feel. And then you would just hit save. So this is where you get the basic setup for your Stableford so that you can go in uh, and get your program moving along. Um, the actual points are actually devised through the reporting, and I will show you that briefly when we get down to reports. 
Okay, and the last thing is, some of you may do a variable best ball. So I'll just click on this. And this is very simple, where you would set up the amount of balls that you want to be used per hole. So let's say you have a four-man group. First hole, they want to use one. Second hole, they want to use two, so three. And you set that up accordingly, and then you'll just hit save. So that's where you would do that setup as well. All right, moving along here. Um, also, here is an import-export function. Um, what's nice about this is that if you have created an event in client and you want to move it over to TPP Online, this is where you would do it. So, or if you want to create an event in TPP Online and you want to move it to the client program, you would export out or you can import in from the other program. It can go both ways. Um, I will say that if you are importing a tournament into TPP Online, that there is one caveat with this program, and we're not sure exactly why this happens, but if your event is more than 100 people, 100 players, um, there's a good chance it will air out. Um, I think it has something to do with the amount of data coming over. So if you are going to use this functionality, just make sure that your field is under 100 people, and then it will work just fine. That kind of sums up tournament. Does anybody have any quick questions before we move along here? Okay, we have a question here. Can you explain shotgun first group A checkbox? So this is referring back to the basic setup. So what this means is that if you are running a shotgun, um, knowing that we have you know A's and B's, if this is checked, it means that the first group of that T, if you had two people on that T, will be marked as 1A, and then you would have 1B. If you uncheck this, the first group will just be deemed 1, and the next group would be deemed 1A. So hopefully that explains it. So that's just a simple option here up front. All right, I don't think we have anything else right now. So that's basic tournament setup. So now that we've got our course in play, we have our tournament in play, we now need to have some players. Obviously, we want to get some players in here. So to load players into our event, we need to come to add player and player management. Now, as I tell everybody that I go through this program, I think this is this program's coolest feature because what's nice about TPP online is that you are on the web and it is instantly connected to the GIN national database which creates a lot of flexibility for you and it saves you a lot of time a lot of people always were talking about well they're not in my master player list well with TPP online the master player list actually I think somewhat becomes obsolete and this is the reason why so I want to pull in some members into my event. So you got three tabs here. You got the member radio button, you got the gin guest, and you have the master player. So I want to pull some members from my club into the event. Because we're on the web, it's going to know exactly who's active in my club, and I'm going to show you how. So you click on the member tab, and then I want you to hit the drop down box. Now you've got a couple options of how to bring people in. You can bring them by name, their local number, by their gin number. But the best feature of them all is add players from club roster. And what this will do is it launch this box. And what's great about that is it instantly, here is every person that is active within this club. And what's easy about this is that, as you can see, is there's their gen number, there's their current handicap index, all the information you would ever want about this player straight from GHP. And all I have to do is check their box on the side here and I can bring people into my event it's that simple so I've selected these individuals and all I do is click save changes at the bottom and as you can see here I've now got seven selected and they are already into my event that quickly and it already has all of their information you would ever want about that player it's quick and easy and that's what's great about this new functionality so here you can just click cancel or the Xbox at top. 
So there you can see I have my seven players that are in the event. Well, now let's say we, we, got a, we have a guest that wants to play in here. So I'm going to come to Jin Guest. Now you have a couple options, once again, of bringing Jin Guest in. I can bring him by first and last and state. I can search by their Jin number. So what's great about this is that you know somebody's got a Jin number and they live in California. Well, I now, all I have to do is know their Jin number or just search by their name. And as long as they are an active member of Jin with maybe the Southern California Golf Association or the Northern California Golf Association, their information will appear in here instantly and all of it will uh, populate into your event. You no longer have to make that phone call confirming with the club that this is the right individual and what is all their contact information, what their index and all of that. You don't have to do that anymore because it's all here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do it by gin number and I'm just going to do myself. You just give it a quick second here. And there I am. I'm a member of the home course. Here's my information. There's my gin number. I'm going to select me. I'm going to click on the blue button to add me in. And now I've been instantly added to the event. There is my information. So now I've got eight people in the event. This is what I want for it was just a quick tournament. So you can see it's really easy to add people in. Now the last thing, um, if you don't have any information on this person or they've never carried a handicap, you still have the option by clicking on the down button, and I would do it under Gen Guest, of manual player entry. So here you enter their name, their gender, you can set up an index or a course handicap for the player, and then down here you would just hit add player, and then they would be loaded into your event. So you still have that option. Now, for Gen Guess, um, that's where master player lists may become useful to you, especially if you have a lot of guests that are um, playing your events year after year. But the reality is that if those are the same people that come back and back, you'll always be able to gather their information through the Gen Guess if they're active at a club. That's why I say master player list is still good, but it's not a necessity like it was on the old system because that software resided directly on the computer and while, while this computer is directly accessing the web in the Gen National database. So just that added feature. So now that I've got my players here, you can see we've got all their information. Um, I will quickly show on here on the left-hand side that if you want to remove a player, you can click on the trash can and they will be deleted from your event. And this little pencil icon here is about how you edit information for players. So as you can see here, it's pulled over the generic information, but if there is additional information that you want to populate, especially for your reports, this is where you would do it, where it's contact information, email, maybe you're running a college event and you want to enter in their school. So things like that, that can be all entered in here for the, the player. And so, and then just make sure at the bottom, um, if you want to save those changes to the master player list, click on the button here, and then we'll click on save changes, and then it will all be updated. All right, so that is at player player management. Um, it's a really cool feature. Uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, just please reach out to us. So I'm going to quickly go through the other functionalities of player. Um, under Add Remove Player Options, what I'm going to quickly go about here is the substitute player. If you've added people into your event, but you have not gotten so far to actually put teams together, you haven't created pairings, I think pairings is the critical one here, um, go ahead and delete the player out of your event and then add a new one in. But if you have gone so far to create pairings and the whole works, and this tournament's just ready for scoring, then you want to use the substitute player option. Um, we have seen that if you delete somebody out of the tournament and then you add somebody in and you have done all the work uh, prior and you don't use substitute player, uh, we have seen errors generated. So just keep in mind that you want to use the substitute player if you've gone through all the work. And what it will do is it will automatically swap out 
the person that it was part of the event and now out and then add the one in pretty easily. So just make sure to use that for that, for that purpose alone. Um, master player options here. Um, you can create a wait list of pending players. Um, also can generate, you can go into your master player list. So this is how you would actually look at your entire master player list here. Um, also you have the option of um, deleting people out of your master player list and you can update their information by clicking on edit and looking at that history. So that's how you would gain access into it. Um, tournament player functions. A um, couple quick things here. Uh, cart caddy assignments, um, definitely if you're going to need to generate a report for the club. Um, as you can see here, you can tell the program whether you want everybody to have a cart or some have a cart or some have a caddy. So you would just select and then hit save. Um, if you're running a skins game, so you come to tournament player functions and skin setup. Once again, you just select whether they are part of the skins game on the gross or net side or both or select everybody. Works the same way and then just hit save. Um, importing and exporting player data. Um, if you have a spreadsheet of players that are part of your event, you can import those players into your event without having to go through the add player player management. Um, we, we especially see this when we have, um, we've been working with uh, the WIAA with high school tournaments and they're going to use the import player because they generate their list outside of GIN right now. And then so you would come into import player data, you would set up your spreadsheet based on the caller headums that are part of this program, and then you import those players in. So it's another way of bringing people into your tournaments based on some specific data. Once again, keep that under 100. We have seen errors with that as well. All right, um, the rest of this we won't go quite into. Um, there is a way to email your players directly out of TPP. It's part of the system. So just know that there is a way to blast people. A lot of people who use eClubhouse love the broadcast email tool. This is a similar way of broadcasting information to your players that are uh, directly from TPP. Um, the last thing I want to talk about here is update handicap indexes. So for people that want to get ahead of the game and start building their tournament, before um, the well before the event actually starts, obviously there's probably going to be a revision in between or two. And so what's great about this, just like the old client program, you can come in here and update their indexes based on their gen number. Um, the key here is just make sure that everybody is in the selected column, not in the available column, and you want this based on the latest revision, use the current, and then you would update handicap indexes. What's also nice with this is that if you're a multi-round, and let's say one day of the tournament is on the 14th, but the second day is on the 15th, and you guys all decide that for that second round, you want those indexes updated for that second round, you could change this to round two and then update those indexes for the next round so you have current information part of your tournament event. So that is all available to you. So. Just keep in mind that this will update the whole record for you and keep you current for your event of the day of. That kind of sums up players. Do we have any questions? Yeah, Kevin, we have one question from Sharon. Right, one question here. When I specify cart for certain players and save, um, the shit report shows everyone wanting a cart. And so um, I would have to take a look at that specifically. So um, if you want to write me a note, we will take that one offline to take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to move forward here. So that kind of sums up players. So now we've kind of have, you know, the basic foundation of our tournament set up, tournament, course, and players. Um, now that we are doing a four ball, so we need two-man teams. So obviously we're just progressing down the line here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create teams. So we're going to come to Create, Remove Teams. So we want to create a new one. 
and we need to give this team group a name. Uh, teams is just fine what it defaults to. Uh, team size, we want two people per team, so it's already defaulted to that, that's great. Now we have to create, we need some kind of creation method. And we've got a lot of choices in front of us. We could do it by ABCD, which is um, allocating handicap strokes accordingly, so it's even across the board. We could do it by index, we do course handicap, we could do it randomly, we could do manual, or we can do a lot of things. In this example, because we have only eight players in our event, we're going to do it manually. And we're going to come down here and we are going to create our teams. So just like the old client program, it creates the grid format, which we all love because it's easy to move people in and out of our events and switch them up. So we have all our eight players here on the sideline, and all you need to do is we just, you left click, you hold, make sure it turns yellow, and then you slot them into the event. So we'll quickly do this. So now we have our teams. Once again, I made some changes here. Always hit the save button. All right, now our teams have been saved. Now a couple of pieces of information here that also are great is under the show, um, I can show specific information about these players. Now right now we have it under entry number. That's why you have the numbers one through eight. But maybe I want to see their index for each player. So there they go. Now under the parens, you now can see the indexes. Now you're like, well, wait a minute. These groups just don't look right. Something there is, there's like an imbalance here. So maybe Brian needs to move in Troy spot. So I can just left click, drop it on top, and then they will swap positions. And then I'm going to save that information. Also, if you have multiple teams going on in your event, uh, if you click on the drop down, all of those T groups will, team groups will be listed here. In this case, we only have one. So and then we got our teams all set up. Now, also, if you see across the top here, right click on team name number for advanced options. So this is basically the power of the right click. There's a lot of this built into the teams and flights. So what this is talking about is if you drop it over the team name, if I right click, we now have additional options to us. So the first ones is insert and add team. The difference between these are that an insert means that it insert at the point where you right clicked. Add team means that it adds a team to the bottom of the list. That's the, the clear difference between these. If you want to rename the team, we can absolutely do that. Click on here and we'll just call this team home course. So, and then it gets renamed. And this, all this information will be replicated on the reports as you change it. Um, let's say that this team one is in the wrong slot. It should be in the second slot. Well, I can move them all down or up one position. So let's move them down. And I apologize, I actually moved the whole group down. <laughs> um, so let me move these back up. And in this case, I am going to delete this team. And I'm going to save. All right. Uh, you could set as team captain. And um, in this case, it only moved the only the one position down. I'll have to take a look at moving all positions down. Um, but uh, I'll have to take a quick look at that. All right, so that kind of sums up team management. Um, also, under team management functions, um, the big one here is that is handicap settings. Um, as you all know, with, uh, with especially with a best ball, a lot of times you guys use stroke limits. And I kind of quickly would like to talk about this. Um, so let's say that you run a best ball and you have an eight stroke limit. So what you would do is apply the stroke limit. And in this case, you would do eight strokes. Now, I want to touch base on this one topic in particular because we've been trying to educate our clubs about it. 
And this recommendation comes straight from the USGA um, for the, from the handicap manual, and, and this is the reason why. Um, let's say you have a group that has a team handicap of um, 5 and 30, and you have an 8-stroke limit. Now, if you just left it as an 8-stroke limit, many clubs apply that that 5 would stay a 5 and that 30 would drop to 13. My question to you is, is that tournament, is that team have a fighting chance to win the tournament? The answer is no. There's no way. Just because two guys are really good buddies and they want to have and create a team, and one's a great golf grower and another one is a 30 handicapper, they still should have a fighting chance to win the event. So what the USGA actually recommends for a best ball, and a best ball only, is that um, you apply the 10%, which we'll get to handicap uh, percentage at the bottom here in a second, but it would be the 90% for best ball, and then after you apply that, you would then apply an additional 10% to the team if they are still outside of the stroke limit. And here's the reason why. Let's go through that example. So we're going to apply 10% to each. So the 5 would still stay a 5, and the 30 would become a 27. Are they outside the 8? Yes, they are. So then the guidelines say they go to an additional 10%. So the 5 would still be a 5, but that 27 would then become a 24. Now you have a team of 5 and 24 versus 5 and 13. Does a 5 and 24, even though he's been reduced six strokes, have a fighting chance in the event? The answer is yes, because now that he's been reduced enough so for the team factor, but it's also factoring in that there needs to be some reduction, but we don't want to take that team completely out of the event. And so I just, that's just a little tidbit for your club if you guys aren't already doing that or something you want to share. We do have a handygram on this. So it's good information that we want to get out there that, remember, you know, WSJ adopted the model golf for everyone, and that this is a great way of including more people in your events. We don't want to dissuade people from getting away. Just because two guys know each other and our handicaps are really far apart, that shouldn't be a reason for them not to compete because of the stroke limit alone. We want to bring more people into our events, and so this is a great way of doing it while still – reducing them to a, a, an extent where they still have a fighting chance in the event. And if you're going to apply this, all you would do is you would use the reduced by an additional percent, and there's the additional 10%. Now moving down here to handicap percentages, because this is a four ball, um, we want to set that to 90%. That's the re recommended guidelines from a Section uh, 9-4 in the USGA handicap system. So we'll do 90 and then it automatically sets the set player 2 to 90, and then we'll hit save. Now let's say you're doing some kind of team event where you just want to take a general percentage of the whole team as a, as a whole. Um, instead of using the players, you would use total team course handicap. You would click on the use button, and then you would set that percentage. As you can see, these are grayed out because they're not going to be applied, but then this would take 50% of the entire course handicap of the entire team and then apply it to the scorecard. We don't want to use that for this event. We do want it on an individual basis and then we will hit save. All right. Um, last thing I want to point out under functions is that you can set up team skins just like the individual skins we did under player. There is a way to do that for the team as well. Okay, that was a lot of information. So do we have any questions on the team side? So we have a question here. Do these reduced handicaps show up in the course handicap in the various, uh, various panels? So um, what it will do is um, the answer is no. Um, the additional percentages are actually applied when we do our scorecards. Um, so what it will do is it will show you the course handicap, and then it will actually show you the, the percentages, the 90%, but the additional 10% is actually not applied 
Um, the only place you will actually see it is on the scorecard because you do a handicap adjustment on it. So the, the percentages should show up, the, meaning the 90% on your reports. Okay. Well, we're about 50 minutes in here, so um, we do got a little bit more information. Um, I, because this, we want to keep this under two hours, I am going to do a five-minute break. So it is 9.50 right now. So at 9.55, we will rejoin, and then we'll quickly get through the rest of this information. And then um, if you have any questions at the end, we will get to them. So we'll rejoin you guys here in, in about five minutes. Thank you.
All right, everyone, let's, uh, let's get back to this. Hope everybody got a nice little break to stretch out. Okay, so we finished up Teams. Uh, I don't see any additional questions. So um, what we're going to do next is we're going to set up some simple flights. Um, we're going to move right down the list here. So you've got a couple options here. Um, so. What's great about flights, um, as you can see, you have three main options. Um, you can do it by players, you can do it by gender or age, or you can do it by teams. So obviously we have a four ball going here. So we're going to set up some flights by teams. And we get this create window that looks very similar when we created our teams. Um, so it's very similar from the flight side. So we want to create a new flight. We need a name, so Flight of Teams works. Um, we want this set up by teams. Um, if we had other team groups set up, there would, the option would be here. And then you got to figure out how you want to create these. So you could do it by number of flights, size of flights. You can manually put people in these flights. But for this example, we are going to do number of flights. And I want to do this by handicap index. And we're going to create two flights. So we'll have two teams per flight. And then you will click Build. So give us a quick second. And there we go. So we've got the two teams with the lower handicaps on the left-hand side. And then the two teams with the higher handicaps on the right-hand side. And we're now flighted. Now also keep in mind the setup is the grid format, just like the teams, that if we needed to pull somebody on the sidelines, you could add to the remove players drag here, and there they're on the sideline. But maybe I need to pull them back in. You drop them here for each flight, and now they're part of the flight again. Also, um, if you want to show different information about these uh, uh, players and these teams, um, you do have the show option button. But I do want to see their handicap index. And then um, using the right click again, um, I do have a couple options here. If I'm inside the flight name and I right click, um, you can add additional flights, you can rename and delete. So a common one, especially if you're running a match play event, you're running flight or something, let's say instead of calling it flight one, this is our championship flight. So I'm going to rename, we'll just call this champ, perfect, champ flight. So now our flight is called champ flight. And the next one is called Flight 2. That's perfect. So I'm going to click on Save. And now all my flights have been saved with the updated naming convention. So as you can see, uh, this is pretty straightforward in flight management, uh, moving people around, renaming, adding flights, showing different information. Um, there's not a whole lot to this. so. Um, also under flight, um, we've gone through create, we've gone through flight management. Um, managing division is actually um, something completely different. Um, I'm not even going to get into it. Um, if you need to break people up by different groups, please use the flight, create flights. It's the best way in this program. Um, you may run into issues with divisions. So that kind of sums up flights. It's a pretty quick section. Uh, I'll wait a quick second here to see if we have any questions. All right. So now we've got all this in place here. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need pairings for our event. So this is where we're going to kind of draft up where we want people to be in what order. So we click on pairings. And you see here we have a lot of options in front of us. 
So we're doing a stroke play event, so I have the option to create pairings, and you can also remove pairings. This whole middle section is, the, um, is set up for match play. Um, please reach out to us if you have any questions. If you want to set up a match play event in, in TPP Online, we will absolutely go through all this with you. And then pairing management reassigned starting times and tees, we will go through here in a second. And then there's a whole section if you're doing league or round robin. So for our case here, we want to create stroke play pairings. And here's our setup, very similar to the client program. Um, we want it by round one. Um, we want to pair by teams. Um, you have a different to a sort, but most of you do by sending. Um, our golf course is selected here already, the home course, because it was defaulted. And then how many teams do you want per group? Well, in this example, we just we want two, so we have a foursome going out. So we want two teams per group. And then we need to figure out how we want these paired. Now, I will admit that the pairing method is way over here on the right-hand side. It would have been my preference that it would have been way over here. So just keep in mind that it is up here. The sub-method would come underneath pairing method if you needed a secondary method of pairing. So uh, we will do this. Let's do this randomly. So we're going to do a random pairing, and then also you could create a sub-method of how you want to. And I love index. So this will be first, and then this will be second in how you set them up. Also keep in mind that if you're running a big event, let's say you're running a massive event of like 156 players, and so much so that you need to run two waves. Let's say you have a morning wave and an afternoon wave. You would come to waves and you set up with two. Most of you will just have one wave, just knowing that that option is available to you. Um, under advanced setup, um, the one thing that is highlighted right now is the flight group. So if you do have flights and you want to make sure those pairings are set up by flight, um, you would select flight of teams. Because this is so small, I'm just going to leave it as none. But just keep in mind that you can um, set up your pairings by flight if necessary. And the last piece down here is the wave details. So you would select your starting time and then how you want to get these people onto the golf course. So are they all going off the first tee, they're going off the tenth, are you using split tees, or are you using shotgun? So um, in this example, we will use it off the first tee, but I do want to show you the shotgun because I want to show you the wave details button that pops up with this. Um, before we get to that, also keep in mind that um, here are your time intervals. Um, there are two buttons here because you have, um, sometimes people like to go, you know, eight minutes with the first group, seven with the second group. In that case, you would do eight here, seven here. For this example, we're just going to go 10 and 10 every 10 minutes. And then we're going to create our pairings. And this is the button of the screen I want to show you that comes up with shotgun. So what's nice about this is that you, it shows that we have two groups and we have two current groups set up on the golf course. Now, if I want those groups elsewhere, this is where you would use these ones and zeros to accordingly set those groups up. Now, let's say that I don't want them off one and two. So currently I have zero groups on the golf course. But I do then want them off the back nine, so I want them off 10 and 11. Always make sure that your current number matches your group number. So now I've got one group going on 10 and one group going off 11. So I'm going to hit OK. And give this a second. And there we go. So give us a second here, it's going to populate. And so now we've got our group set up for their tee times, one going off 10 and one going off 11. So backtracking to the question that there was in basic setup where it said uh, shop group, you know, in parens A. So because we had that checked, it marked the first group as A. If that was unchecked, this would just be marked as T10. Now, if we want, these groups can be, once again, in, in this grid form, moved around. So let's say this was in the wrong. I need to put them on the sideline. Um, 
team home course actually should be up here, and this team should be here. So you can easily move them around, and I'm going to save my information. And then also, once again, you can utilize the right click. Um, you can sort, you can insert and add, as we talked about, inserting is at the point, adding goes to the bottom. Um, we can reassign to starting tee times, we can adjust starting times, we can delete groups out, we can move people up and down. So these are all available to you. So we're happy with how they're set up. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to pairings. And I realized that, oh, shoot, they need to do maintenance work on the back nine. So going them off 10 and 11 just doesn't work. So we need to reassign here. So what we can do is that we can go back to reassign starting tees and times. And we can put them back on now onto the front nine. So this works really simple. This shows you what the old data is. And then now you need to put in the new data. Well, we still want them to go off at 8 a.m. That works. But we want them to go off the, a newer T. So in this case, instead of 10, we want them to go off 1. And this group go off 2. And I don't like the A's. So I'm going to wipe out the A's. And then I'm now going to save this information. All right, it's now been set. And now if I come to pairings, and come back to pairing management. Keep in mind that all of these modules in here all have a management section, just like the client program. So whenever in doubt about managing your information, always come to management in each section. All right, so here's our groups again. And as you can see now, the first group is going off team one without the A, and group two is going off group uh, off the second tee with no A as well. So that's how you can easily adjust um, tee times and, and uh, tee boxes really easy within the program without having to jumble through maybe the grid form. It's really simple to use the uh, reassigned starting times and tees. So now I'm happy with our, our pairings here. So the next thing we would do is jump into scorecards, but I will wait one second here to see if anybody have any questions about pairing management. All right, I'm not seeing anything at the moment, so we will move right along. Okay, one minute, so now that we have our pairings, we need scorecards. So we're going to come to scorecard configurations. Can you hold up a minute, Kevin? And this setup is exactly the same way as the old client program. You're going to set up your round. Um, flight groups, I don't want this by flights. We'll leave this as none. Um, we want dots for the players. So we want to know what strokes to get on what holes. So we're going to dot full handicap. Um, course, fine, the home course. We do want this by team group. And then we need a card. Well, this is a team competition, so we're going to select team. All right, so now what does, when we click on team here, it now generates all of the team cards that are available. Um, anything in yellow here are uh, standard scorecards that Jen has put into the system. If you see a purple one, it means that it's a card that has been customized and imported in, which I will get into here in just one second. So we need to set up the remainder of this scorecard. Now what's important here too is that this is a handicap event. We went into handicap settings for those teams. And so we set up the allocation 90% per player and we have a stroke limit and if they're outside that stroke limit, we're just reducing them by an additional 10%. So we need that to work on our scorecard and actually show up. And that is all done under the handicap section. So in this example, um, if you're doing individual competition, you could use player or this the index, but this is a team competition. So you basically have two options here. 
And I'm going to tell you the one that you should use and not the other one, and there's a reason for it. One is Team Shuffle, and one is Team Hideful Handicap. And what that means is that under Team Shuffle Handicap, under the Handicap section on the scorecard, it will show you the course handicap of the turn for the day of the tournament that it should be playing to, and then I'll do a slash, and then the, the their full normal course handicap. If you choose to do this, most likely it is going to confuse your players because they're going to see one number that will probably be dramatically lower than their normal course handicap, and they're going to be saying, "What's going on here?" It would be in your best interest to use Team High Full Handicap. So the only course handicap that shows for that individual player is the one that has been correctly adjusted for them based on the format of the tournament. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use Team Show a High Full Course Handicap. The rest of this, honestly, is um, additional setup that you may want to utilize or additional features you want shown on your scorecard. If you're doing pace of play, that could be allocated here. Pace of play, once again, is on your scorecard. When we were setting up our, our scorecards, there was a piece for it. So based on the time that you start, let's say you're starting at 8 a.m. and everything was 15 minutes, under the, the, hand, the pace of play on your scorecard, every 15 minutes it will show you a clock about where you should be on the golf course. And, and how you want the, the player's name to display, that can be all adjusted. Uh, print order. Um, if you're doing a shotgun, one um, key suggestion is to shade your starting hole, and that's what we'll do here because we are doing a shotgun. So you can change that color. You got oodles of colors to choose from, but light gray works for me. And then we're going to come down here. We need to select our card. Well, for this event, we're doing a four ball. But well, what's great here is that Jen has already offered us a two-person four-ball scorecard, gross and net, which is exactly what the term we're doing. So I'm going to select this card. And here's the preview of the scorecard. So it's great that you enter in the individual player's score holes here, and then they, they can uh, accordingly um, write down their best ball gross and net scores here below. So I love this. This all looks good. So what I want to do is I want to print all. You do have the option of hitting print selected. If you don't want to see all of the scorecards because you're just playing around with the, the settings, I would use the print selected and then just select one team and see how that scorecard comes out. But for this example, I'm going to do print all. And what this will do is it's going to generate a full preview of our scorecard. Give it one second here, and here we go. So, here we go. So, at the top here, here are all your options with what to do with the scorecard. You can print, you can zoom in, you can change pages, and then you have all of these export functions. Let's say I want these scorecards in a PDF, and I'm going to transfer that PDF to a nice printer, and then print my scorecards. Great example. Or if you want to print them right off the bat, you can just come here to the print button and then print to your selected printer. I'm now going to scroll through here. Um, as you can see, um, here is their course handicap for the day of the event. Um, here's a perfect example where the additional 10% would have kicked in. I would have to go back to what Brian's original course handicap is, but I'm going to guess it was probably around 40, 39, and now he's a 33. Does this team still have a fighting chance to win? Absolutely. And then you've got all the, the uh, appropriate dots for the individual players here, so they know how many dots they get per hole. And as you can see, they have the shaded hole because they're starting on number one. And then I'll adjust it to page two. And there's their shading hole. And they are starting on number two, so they know that they need to use this box when recording their holes and not start here on number one and all their course handicaps have been adjusted accordingly. Um, I will make one comment um, up here. If you happen to use Internet Explorer, for some reason this print button will not show up when you generate these scorecards. I've seen this a couple of times, so just make sure that you're not using Internet Explorer and that, like I said, if you can use Firefox, please do so because you will get the full slate of 
um, buttons up here um, at your convenience. So I'm not going to print these off. Um, you just come here and print. Um, also keep in mind that we do offer scorecards through our office, um, the 404s and the 405s. It just depends on how much uh, perforation you want in your scorecard. Um, we offer those at $35 a box, including ship and tax it. So it really comes out to about $45. Uh, we order these directly from Jen. Um, they come with a 500 sheets and then it's actually a thousand scorecards. So if your club is interested in scorecards, uh, please send a note to me or Colin and we'll get those ordered to you. And then on your next invoice, um, you will see that for the scorecards directly to your club. Just want to let you know that it is available to you. Okay, so that is scorecards. Now, what I wanted to bring up, and we talked about this at the beginning, is that there is, as you can see, there is no scorecard designer, which was a really cool tool in the old program, and we will hopefully see that in the new iteration of the TPP program to come out in about two years. So I want to go through the import export really quickly here, and then we'll get to our questions for the section. Um, you have the option to export these standard scorecards out and bring them in the client, adjust them, and then bring them back in. So a lot of you probably have custom scorecards in the client program. And this is where you can bring those cards directly in the client and they will work the exact same way. You just won't be able to edit them. So you'll just come to import scorecards. You'll find that file, that zip file that you exported out. You'll, you'll grab it, you'll open it up, and then you'll hit OK and you'll bring it in. It's as simple as that. Um, so if you have that stuff, please bring them in. Um, when you do your scorecard configuration, just like this example, it, they will all be in purple, this little purple book, and then you can use them going forward. The only piece of customization that is available within this program, and I didn't touch on this, is the logos button. So if you click on logos, um, you have the option of loading in four logos. So select which slot you want. This is logo one. You will upload the browse for the file. Uh, please keep in mind these files shouldn't be too big. If they are, please shrink them um, so then when you bring them in, because you, the system may air out if your file is, you know, five megabytes, it's, it's going to crash the system. So please shrink your logos down and then browse and then upload it in. And so then when you use this, you'll just select the logo and I'll populate in your box if there's a logo spot available for it. So that kind of finishes up scorecards. Um, I heard that we do have a few questions, so let's take a look here. All right, um, right here. How would you set up a scorecard for mixed teams using two different tee boxes? Great question. So what we would do here is I would use the Nope, it's the 404. I would use the type 404. As you can see here, there is one T up top and there's one T at the bottom. So what will happen here is that the men's problem most likely would be listed up top. The women's T information would be loaded down here. Um, you would load all, the players would load in and then the dotting would be according to their course handicap and the allocation strokes on the scorecard for their particular set of tees. The program knows how to sort through all of that. So this would be a great example of how to do it, two separate tees on the same scorecard. All right. What else we got here? I thought you said at the beginning of the presentation there was no scorecard functionality. What did you mean? Okay, so what I meant by that is that um, there is scorecard functionality, but you cannot, there is no scorecard designer. Um, old TPP had a designer where you could bring up a standard card and completely redesign what the scorecard would look like. Scorecards will always be a part of the program. It's just a designer feature that is not part of this program, and it is part of the old program. That's why we speak about 
if you want to go in the old program and design a card, you can export that card out of client and then import it into the new TPP online program. Um, if you want some help with that or don't want to discuss about it, please reach out and call me or email me and we can have that further discussion. Um, here's one, suppose I need to change the date. Is there a way to do it without recreating pairings from scratch? Um, unfortunately, there is not. Um, unfortunately, when the date is set under basic setup, it is transposed throughout the program. And so if you do create pairings and it is tied to that date, um, they are kind of symbiotic. And so it's kind of set in stone. So unfortunately, if the event does change, um, you will have to go back in there and recreate. It's unfortunately, but they are their information is tied together, and so it doesn't be able to break it out and change it within there because it's all set to the basic setup. So I, I understand on that one. Uh, can you show pace of play times? Um, I could. Um, unfortunately, I don't have those set up in the scorecard. Um, but what would happen is, I can show you really briefly, if you come back to course, course management, I go into T's, I go to white, and click on scorecard, here's your pace of play. And what you would do is you would enter in the amount of minutes for those. So par fours are usually 14 minutes, par threes are usually 13 minutes, and par fives are usually allocated 15 minutes. That's a general rule of thumb. So if I did this, and, and obviously you adjust accordingly, especially if you have T boxes that are really far apart that people need additional walking time, you just adjust accordingly. And, whoops, that should be 14. And there you go. And you get the hour to four hours and 12 minutes. And then I'll come back to scorecards. And I'm going to do my team card. Let me readjust that. This scorecard actually probably won't work because there's not a section for it. But if I do select, let me see if it shows up on this card. So pace of play, um, time to finish. And let's run this card. And you see here, there you would select the two T's that you're using for that 404. I can go back to that. And I don't have pace of play on here. I would need to find a scorecard that actually has pace of play on it. Um, I want to move along here. Uh, but once I find a card that has pace of play, I can pass that information along. There needs to actually be a slot for it. And so um, I needed, like I said, I need to dig through here. But what would happen is if we were starting at 8 a.m., T box one, if the, for the slot, it would show 8:15 or whatever time, and then it would just incrementally add based on the scorecard we just did, and then those times would just be time to finish. What time you need to be finished with that hole, and it would be listed on the scorecard. But I need to find a card that actually works with that. So that's how that would work. And so you can either do it by time to start or time to finish, and that's up to you. All right. Um, let's see if we have any other questions. Okay, I think that's it. So. Um, Let's move along here. Oh, and the one thing I will talk about once again with the question of the, the multiple uh, 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 T's on the card. If I do a 404 again and I print all, 
this is where this the white T would be on top and this T would be showing up on the bottom if you didn't already see that. So if I want white and white, that's fine. I want gold to show up on the bottom. This is how it would show up on the scorecard. So just keep that in mind for that one question we had earlier. Okay, so that's scorecards. Let's, uh, let's move along here. So now that we've got base, all our basics set up in play, we're now gonna move on to scoring. So as you can see, there is a lot of stuff here. Um, the top four things have to do with those additional features we talked about at the beginning about the website scoring, the live television. So we're not going to get into that today because this is a basic overview course, but we will do we will do some videos to kind of show those additional features here in the future. For this event, um, this is the main section people will operate mostly in terms of getting scores into the system. Um, player scoring is the number one option. Um, you can use tournament hole by hole. Um, honestly, I would stay away from this one. You're better off to just use player scoring when you're entering individual hole by hole scores. And then you do have the option for team scoring. But because this, is, now team scoring would be great for let's say you're doing a scramble because there's just one ball in play and you need one score for that team. Now, because this is a four ball or a best ball, everybody plays their own individual ball. So you would want to use player scoring. So we need to set this up correctly. So it's round one. We can set up a list order. So I want it by T and then by time. And so it adjusts it accordingly over here. And then the next thing we have to do, and this is important, is that you need to click on the scoring options button. And this is where we set up how the format of the event will work. So I want round one. It's already done by hole by hole. If you want to go front and back or totals, you can. But it's important with, for the handicapping purposes that we do have hole by hole. We already did the list order earlier. And then we need the team groups because this is a team competition. So we're going to select teams. And what this will is it generate the team scoring settings. This is the most important piece here. How are we scoring this event? So you've got a couple options here. Um, best score, well, that's not what we want. We want this is a best ball. So we want a best ball. If you were doing a variable best ball, which we showed you how to set that up, you would select variable best ball. So for this event, we're going to do best ball, and we want best one out of two balls. So we're just going to leave it as one. If you're doing two out of four, you would select this and set this to two. So I'm happy with all this. Um, over here, the one thing I want to point out is show net results. If you are doing a net tournament, you want to click on this, and the reason why is that when you start editing and typing in hole by hole information for that player, if you do not show net results, the net side of the how the how the individual net is going and how the team net is going will not show up, and so you won't be able to see that data instantly as you're typing it in. You would only see the gross. So we want to click on show net results and then click save. All right, so now that we have scoring set up exactly how we want for this event, we now need to start typing in scores. So I'm going to go to Tom's and click on edit. Okay, so now it's time to enter in scores in. So as you can see now, we can see the net score, their ESC, the team gross, and the team net. So I'm going to start randomly punching scores in. All right, there you go. So you saw an 85, and that's 83, and there's the team scores. And then we're going to save. All right, and then we're going to move to the next partner. So now you can see the team stuff has already been populated because we've entered in Tom's information. And then as you make changes above here, the team information will, will adjust accordingly as well. All right, so now you shot an 89, there's his net score, there's the team gross score based on the best ball and their team net. 
So this is one piece that everybody asks about is that you see the individual scores here, but you don't see the team scores. Unfortunately, that has not been built into the program. I apologize, I wish it was there. The only way to see the team scores live as you're punching them in is you have to be inside the individual scorecard. Um, once you leave it, it will only show you the individual score, it will not show you the team score outside of that. The only other place to see that is actually in reports, which we'll get to next. Okay, so that's scoring and how you set it up. Um, also, a couple of tidbits here. Um, if you're doing a multi-day competition across many rounds, you can do a stroke play cut, just like the old program, and then you can assign playoff winners if you had a uh, some kind of playoff for the winner at the end. Um, these are important, especially if you're doing the live web broadcasting, because the, the cut and the playoff winners will be um, shown on the web space so people know who won the event. Uh, the rest of this is about match play scoring, extra holes, uh, round robin and league play scoring. Um, the last thing I want to touch based on though is posting scores to Jen. Um, this is a good time to actually talk about a little bit about the handicap changes. Um, there has been a huge emphasis in the book now on what is deemed a tournament score. Um, there, basically what it states is that there should be scrutiny in how a tournament score is deemed a T-score. Um, we don't just want any score, even though it's just a regular event. Um, there is a section in the handicap manual that actually has a diagram now that talks about what is, should be a tournament score and what it should not. It basically falls about what is rich in tradition, um, what is those tournaments that are your majors at your golf course that have been around forever. Those should be the tournament scores for your events. Um, I just wanted to point that out, um, that if you guys are taking a look at that, please you know, scrutinize those scores. And then secondly, in order for a score to be a T-score, the, the tournament committee must announce before the tournament begins or before the, the player tees off that you will be posting for them. Uh, if you do not announce um, the score, it cannot be deemed a T-score. It has to be known to everybody that's going to be a T-score before they start. So just keep that in mind. Um, what you'll do here is you'll select the round you want to send to Jen. And then what type it is, if, so if it's just a home score, you'll just post it as a home score. Let's say this is a tournament score, this is one of our majors at our club. And then you click post scores, and then all those scores will be sent off to Jin, and then those players won't have to enter that information in themselves. So that was a little bit of information there underscoring, I know it's a lot, um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I think the key thing is that when you go into player scoring, please make sure to go to that scoring options blue button and make sure the event is set up properly for that day. And do we have any questions? I'm not seeing any right now. I'll give it one second. All right, so I don't see any, so we're going to go into our last section, and that is reports. So they did this a little bit different than the old uh, client program. Um, they've actually built a search tool for you to find reports. Um, and then the last key pieces here, we'll go into here just a second. So how this is done is that they have created a category, a type, and then you can search by name. I will let you know that because there is no report designer anymore in this program, and hopefully there will be one for the future, they have filled this uh, space with hundreds of standard reports. So I'm hoping you will find some report that you want. Now, it doesn't mean that if you have reports from client that you, you customize and design, I will show you how to bring those in so you can use them for your events. So we have done an event here. We've got a couple of scores in the system. As you can see in the report category, we've got many topics to choose from. I can do a player record, I can do a team's report, um, I can do a scoring report. So let's go in scoring as one example. And so I've got choices here. So this is a single round team event. 
Um, I'm going to leave flighted alone, even though we do have flights in there. So I'm going to do single round team. And now I've got all these reports I can choose from. What this will do is it will display the first 10. As you can see down here, it says showing 1 to 10 of 10 entries. If this was more than 10, you would come over here to the right and you would page through the next 10 reports that are available. So as you can see here, there's one report here that I really like. And so I have marked it with a star. As you can see up top here, you got all reports, but you do have two radio buttons, um, a favorites and a frequently run. Um, if there is a report that you love and having this, instead of having to search for it all the time, please mark it with a star so that when you click on favorites up top, all your favorite reports will show up instantly and then you can run them without having to go search for them. So I'm going to run this, uh, this uh, particular one. So you have two options here. The I is a preview. Now keep in mind this is a generic preview with no data into it. So this is just a generic look of what this report looks like. Say, okay, I like this. what this looks like. I want to run it. So you're going to click on the front arrow. And I need to set up, so it's by teams, round one, um, type of score. Now this is where we talked about Stableford. This is where you would actually adjust. So here's your Stableford. So what this will do is this report will now generate a Stableford competition on the report instead of just generic uh, gross and net strokes. And then you, it will use the Stableford point setup you did under basic setup, which we talked about at the beginning of this webinar. So this is how you do it. There's no other way to generate it any, anywhere else in the system. You have to do it from reporting. So this, at least you know where that is now. I want gross and net. Handicap system, we're using USGA. If you want to use a tiebreak method, just like the old program, you could do card match, you could do return sequence. Card match is the most popular where it goes, I think it goes you know, back nine, then last six, last three, then 18, 17, all the way back through until you find a winner. We're not going to do any here, and then we're going to run this report. Once again, you need to tell it it's set up, just like we did under scoring. Once again, this is a best ball. You do have the other options here, you know, manual, if you're just you're doing a scramble or a, an odd format, variable best ball, best score. But in this case, we're doing a best ball, one ball, and then we're going to hit OK. And let this report generate. And there we go. So there's the gross result, that was a 69, and there's their net result of the team, that was a neg uh, minus 6. So you can see the report's generating it just like it wants to. Just like scorecards, you have the same toolbar up top. You can print, you can zoom, you can page through the different pages. You can export to the different formats. It's all available to you. Uh, keep in mind that there are hundreds of reports in here. Um, and sometimes it may be best just to honestly go to all on both of these and just type in, maybe you want an alpha report. So I'm just going to type in alpha. I'm going to hit search. And here you go. Here is all the alpha. There's 19 alpha reports. So scan through here and find the alpha report that works best for you. And it works all the same way, just how we ran the report previously. The one last thing I will add here in the upper right is that you can add logos just like the scorecards, so you'll upload those in, and then those locos will be um, transposed onto the report um, as accordingly. Um, let's go back into reports here. Um, just like scorecards, there is an export and import function to uh, reports, so if you did have reports that you loved and that you created in TPP Client, please export those out. We can walk you through that process and then import them in here in the program. How they will show up is that, as you can see, everything is in standard text, but they will show up as italic, and then that you will know that those are customized that you brought into the tournament, and what I would do is just mark those as favorites so you can go to your customized reports really quickly. And then lastly, we've got here is we've got merchandise distribution and gift certificates. Um, merchandise distribution was in the old client program as well, um, and this works very similar, but you would just create distributions um, as a, you would name it, 
Um, most likely you're going to use a mount. So I want the top three places. And then you would enter the dollar amounts for those top three places. If there's anything you want to do in terms of bonuses or how you award ties, you would enter that information up here. And then when you come back to reports, um, you would do a scoring report and then come to merchandise. And as you can see here, we've got merchandise distribution reports. And then you would run that report. You would then, there would be an option under gross and net to select a, um, a merchandise uh, distribution that you created. So right here. So this is the only one that's created in the system right now, but you would select one. If you have one separate for gross and separate for net, you would select those accordingly and then run your, run your uh, report. And then you can set the greater difference on how you want the money to be allocated if there was a tie between somebody winning gross and net. Should they get the gross or the net? What's the greater significance? You can set that as well. So that's all apart. Like I said, this is a general overview course. I want to move this along. So that kind of sums up reports. Um, under other, the only thing I want to point out is on course and on course users. This is where you would set up users for the um, TPP viewer, which is that live television leaderboard. And if you were going to do on course scoring on the golf course where someone needs a phone or tablet, you actually have to create users for those people. Um, as you can see, I'm set up in here. And so then when they go into those programs, they will log in under the specific user account you set up for that individual, and then you can start displaying that information. Okay, everyone, um, that pretty much sums up the day. Um, I know it's a lot of information we've been spent over the last hour and 45 minutes. Um, this course was designed to be an overview course. Uh, we know there probably is a lot of questions, and we are here to help, me or Colin or John. Um, if you want to email us or call us, we can work through your specific situations on trying to figure out little nuances or how to make your tournament better. We are here. Um, this video will be um, put onto our YouTube channel. So if you want to go out there and view this again, uh, it will be available to you. Um, do we have any last minute questions before we wrap up? All right. If you have a competition with players with different clubs and then post the scores as a way, even those players are played or home course, uh, does this matter? Um, yes and no. She is right. That is a good question. Um, if you do have people from outside, one will be listed as home, one be away. I mean, ultimately, I guess it really doesn't matter, but also um, if they want to contact or they can call their handicap chair, that designation can be adjusted, but it is a good point. All right. Um, Jen was down for three hours. What do you do when that happens? Um, you know, Jen has um, pretty much guaranteed us that this thing will be up, you know, 99% of the time. You are correct. There are going to be some times where something happens because this is in the web space that TVP or Jen may go down for a few hours. Um, this is not the only case. This does will happen from time to time. If it does happen, um, unfortunately, it, it is down. Um, unless you've exported the tournament and put in a client, you may want to do that as a backup situation. Um, but do keep in mind, these are running on pretty reliable servers. So they will keep this thing up and going as fast as possible. They recognize that many people are in the space, and so downtime is essential that it's about, is about to zero as possible. But you are correct. Last night there was a slight downage, and thankfully it was in the middle of the night. So, but do keep in mind that that is a possibility. Okay, I think that wraps it up for questions. Uh, I thank everybody for coming out and watching this today. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, or please email or call us. Um, other than that, um, we will wrap this up, and I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, like I said, reach out. Um, everyone have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye.